Today I'm traveling on the flagship Eurocity train connecting Berlin to Prague, which takes the route along the beautiful Elbe Valley from Dresden to Detschen. We'll travel in comfortable first class seats and visit one of Europe's best dining cars. Hello and good morning from here at the Berlin Hauptbahnhof. But this is not actually where we need to be this morning. The Eurocity trains normally leave from here to Prague, but due to track works this morning, we actually have to go to another of Berlin's major railway stations. So first, just a quick trip down to the platforms. Wait for the next train. Chill for about 5 minutes. And here we are. Berlin Gesundbrunnen Station. A lot of track work is happening in Berlin in the summer of 2023, so if you're taking the train to Berlin, you might get familiar with this station. So let's check the station out and go find our train. The station is connected to the Berlin U-Bahn network, served by line number 8. The station has plenty of shops, including this McDonald's, as well as a supermarket. Here you will find the departure board, showing local transit times on one side, and over here is where the train times are. We are catching the Euro City train carrying the name Berliner to Prague. Right, let's find track 8. The station here is by no means up to the level of Hauptbahnhof, but there are still plenty of shops and it's a pleasant place to wait for your train. You can also easily get here by taking the Berlin S-Bahn. It's served by the ring lines, as well as a few other lines that crisscross the city. Anyway, let's head down to the platform and await for our train to arrive. A regional train to Rostock Hauptbahnhof is currently occupying the platform, but as soon as that leaves, there will be space for our train. And here the train goes on its adventure up to Rostock. I'm actually going to be traveling along this route in the near future, up towards Rostock and then on a ferry to Denmark, but as I'll be coming off a long flight here in Berlin, I'm not sure I'll be making a video on it. The station here also carries the undertitle Nordkreuz, meaning something along the lines of Norden Railway Intersection. Gesundbrunnen is the only one of the four compass direction Kreuz stations in Berlin not to carry that as its primary name. Fresh from the depot comes our train to Prague, consisting fully of rolling stock from the national Czech railway operator Czeske Drahi. We'll find first class at the front of today's train, followed by the lovely dining car, and then a mix of second class seating. Our train is hauled by one of Siemens Vectron locomotives, capable of 200 km per hour. Anyway, let's board the train and find our seat. Seat reservations are optional on board this train. It's not very busy this April morning, but I've heard these trains can get really busy, especially in summer, so do consider making one. And a few moments later, the driver opens up the throttle and we start moving towards Prague. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bozzi Yuru City to Prague. I am the visual address and training. The dining car is located in coach number 261. So the next stop is Trieste Neustadt. The first part of the journey is spent along the Berlin Ringbahn taking us from the northern Gesundbrunnen station around the city before we join the line towards Dresden. And now that I'm talking about the route anyway, let's take a look at the entirety of it. We are on board Eurocity train 171, which today started in Berlin Gesundbrunnen and then makes stops at Dresden Neustadt, Hauptbahnhof, Bad Schandau, Detschen, Usti nad Labem, Praha, Holosowice, and finally the Prague main railway station. 
The train covers a distance of 386 km, scheduled to take 4 hours and 20 minutes, giving the service an average speed of 89 km per hour. And shortly afterwards we had exchanged the bustling city of Berlin for some more rural German countryside. Anyway, let's check out the sea. As expected you will find a nice big tray table. It's actually very sturdy for one of the flip out ones. A small storage net. Down below is where you will find the power socket as well as two USB outlets. And the recline button. There's a slightly padded armrest that can be moved. Winged headrests. They are a bit firm but still very comfortable. Good job Cheske Drahi. I quickly settled in and got some university work done as we made our way down towards Dresden. And while procrastinating from university work, I discovered over on my Twitter by a follower that the line through Dresden was expected to close around 9am due to a nearby World War II bomb removal. And this was exactly during the time our train was scheduled to pass through Dresden. So this essentially now became a race to pass through Dresden before they were done evacuating the citizens in the area. The question is now here from Dresden Neustadt, will we be allowed to proceed or has the bomb removal already started? We locked out this time, as police wasn't done with the evacuation, so we could proceed to Dresden Hauptbahnhof and onwards to Prague. And here we are pulling into Dresden Hauptbahnhof. This is one of the main stations along the route and a lot of people will be joining our train here. After Dresden, you want to sit on the left hand side of the train in order to enjoy the beautiful scenery along the Elbe Valley, so if there's space on board, do switch your seat. I had been wondering why I'd seen so many German rail fans out this morning, but I think we discovered why now. No fewer than four steam engines on some kind of heritage run. I don't know much about heritage railways, so if you have any information on these steam engines, let me know down in the comments. We are now travelling along the Elbe Valley Railway. We'll be following the river of the same name all the way to Dechen in the Czech Republic. The line is by no means fast around here, but it does offer some great views. We then make a brief stop in Bad Schandau, which is the last stop in Germany and where the Czech railway crew takes over. And we are now in the Czech Republic, as this is in the Schengen area, there was no border control at least going into Czechia. And before we make it to Dechen, let me show you around the rest of the train. At the front we find first class, which is in a 2 plus 1 seating layout, mostly airline style with a few base of 4. Next up is the dining car. There's both a takeaway section here located towards first class. From here you can get drinks and snacks and stuff like that to take with you to your seat. However, there is also a full onboard kitchen serving proper restaurant style meals. Next up is second class. Here you will both find seating in compartments like this. They have been retrofitted with stuff like power outlets and are perfectly comfortable to travel in. In addition to the compartments, you will also find some tip-up seats in this flexible area for bikes. But you will also find seating in a more regular 2 plus 2 open airline style coach. Some coaches also have small children's compartments. In general, these trains have a great selection of amenities and seating options. And before I forget, it's time for the toilet review. A nice simple locking mechanism. The toilet is looking clean. Flush is working. It's stuck with toilet paper. There's some disinfectant as well. Crushed soap. And the water seems to be working. Yay! So everything as it should be. Good job. And here we are approaching Dachin, our first station stop in the Czech Republic.
And you can notice from the station canopies and the general station design that we are definitely not in Germany anymore. And with us now being in the Czech Republic, it's a great time to go and visit the dining car. As once the train centers Czechia, happy hour prices apply. You just sit down and pick a seat. Happy hour pricing applies when the train is inside the Czech Republic, so there's really some savings to be had to wait till the train crosses the border. The waiter will come and take your order at your seat, and then it's just time to kick back and relax for a little while as the food is being prepared. I went for the classic sirloin with some pastry dumplings in a creamy sauce, which including a drink came to just under 10 euros. Great value! And as I was finishing my meal, we were now approaching Praha Holosevice. This is the penultimate station on this journey, so it's about time to prepare to get off the train, and uh, let's talk about tickets. So my ticket was actually booked all the way from Copenhagen with an overnight layover in Berlin for 71 euros with some fiddling on the Deutsche Bahn website. But a standalone Berlin Praha ticket will set you back 28 euros in first. The pricing is dynamic like an airline, so on these trains it pays to book in advance either on the Deutsche Bahn or Czeske Drahi website. I think for 28 euros this is great value, especially considering it's a 4 hour 20 minute journey in a comfortable train with all the amenities you could need. And after the brief stop, we are now less than 5 minutes away from Prague's main railway station. And this is now my time to remind you to like the video if you have enjoyed it, and consider subscribing to the channel. I try to upload videos like this every Sunday, but with varying degrees of success. You can also follow me over on Twitter, at InterCitySimon. This is a great place to keep up with my travels in real time, and send me information about possible World War II bomb removals in Dresden, which is much appreciated. Anyway, thank you so much for coming along on the journey today. I'm now off to explore Prague for a few hours, and catch some more Czech trains in the coming few days while I'm here in the Czech Republic. Thanks for watching.